isn't the villain of Scarlet and Violet, nor is it Gita, Dokutaro, Terapagos, or Heath. Every single one of those characters may have something suspicious about them, or something we don't know about them, and they may have ulterior motives, sure, but they're not the villain. I am doubling down on the fact that Jacques is the villain due to many hidden reasons within the game regarding the Teal Mask, the Paradise Protection Protocol, him being one of the only people who have access to Area Zero at all times, even when Clavel doesn't, and him being the owner of both the Scarlet and Violet books. All this and more. Now, I had made a video on this earlier over 6 months ago, but there's no need to watch that video. I'm going to be going over all the details from that video, as well as details that we received from the Teal Mask in this video. As well as throughout the video, I'm going to be making a case as for why Briar isn't actually the villain, because, let's be real, she's the one who most people think is the villain, so by clearing her name, a possibility for Jacques or anyone else opens up. Jacques has always been an interesting character to me. He was one of the very first characters from Scarlet and Violet that was announced to the world, and he seems to be super important, but he's a character who has very minimal interactions with us in comparison to other characters, and in fact, he's the one we know least about. Other characters like Clavel, Sada, and Turo have all had their mysteries revealed, but not Jacques. In fact, even Briar has had her mysteries sorta of revealed. Yes, while I do think there's a lot of mystery to her still, you at the very least know that she's trying to prove her ancestor Heath's claims from the Scarlet and Violet books to be true, and that for whatever reason, she wants to bring terrestrialization to Blueberry Academy and the world, not just Paldia. Jacques, however, you can make a case for him saying that he's trying to study Pokemon and complete the Pokedex, but it's deeper than that. Jacques was actually one of the ones to go down to Area Zero with Sada, Tura, and Clavel, but how many of you actually knew that? Not many, I presume, because he doesn't really mention going down to Area Zero at all. He mentions in his biology class that he went on an expedition with Clavel at some point in the past, and he's shown to be reminiscing it. And we know Clavel went down to Area Zero for sure, because he, unlike Jacques, does mention it a few times. This to me makes me feel like Jacques is hiding it for some reason, and that he's deliberately hiding any association to Area Zero for some reason. But in the Teal Mask, it's made a bit more apparent. Not by him though, but by Briar. You see, Briar wished to go to Area Zero, and instead of asking Clavilla or Gita for some reason, she decided to ask Jacques, whose response we don't really get to see, but we see him shake his head and it seems like he denied her request. Meaning that he has some control over who gets to go to Area Zero and who doesn't. But why? What significance does he have to have this privilege? It's never really explored, and if he has his privileges then it's most likely that he's actually allowed to go into Area Zero in and out as he wants. But okay, sure, all this can maybe be said that it comes with his privilege of being the developer of the Pokedex app for the road on phone and his interest in Pokemon, but that also gives more merit to him having an evil part to play in this story. It gives him more opportunity to be the one behind the Paradise Protection Protocol. The thing that got me looking for another villain in these games was the finale with AI Sada and Turo, and how they get taken over by the Paradise Protection Protocol, which I'm officially going to dub PPP for easier use moving forward. AI Sada and AI Turo seem to have no idea about the PPP, and even wonder what the heck is going on. But to me, it always seems strange that the actual professors didn't let the AI professors know about the PPP, because why would they give them the information to shut down the time machine, but not let them know about a backup failsafe? It just doesn't make sense. And judging by their feelings for Arvin at the end of the game, it tells me that the professors didn't just care about the time machine as the AI professors once questioned. They cared beyond that. And the AI professors most likely did have all of the Sada and Turo's memories and feelings. And if that were the case, then it would mean that the PPP here was not a result of Sada and Turo, but more than likely a mechanism in place by another character. A character who's a villain who doesn't want to let go of this so-called paradise. A character who would have been there with Sada and Turo. And if that character isn't Clavel, then the only other possible character would be Jacques. That's the only other person who would have known Sada and Turo well enough to be able to mess with their time machine and all. And let me remind you that when you see AI Sada and AI Turo for the first time in school, Clavel is shocked and has no idea about their AI selves. So it couldn't be him. Meaning that it can only be Jacques, and Jacques despite this happy-go-lucky personality, doesn't seem to acknowledge Sada Turo at all. Jacques always seems to be this guy who's enthusiastic and super airheaded. But is he really? Yes, that is the persona that he puts on, but I think it's a front. 
just to trick us because obviously with a personality like that, no one is ever going to think that he's actually a villain. And if he is so warm and friendly, he definitely knows that Sada and Turo are Arvin's parents. So why does he never reach out to Arvin the way he reaches out to us? Like how he did in the Teal Mask. There's no way you're telling me there was a random lottery for four people to go to Kitakami and we didn't even enter and Jacques is the one that calls us to tell us that we've been selected for such a trip and then he randomly follows us to Kitakami, sits us down, checks up on us even though he had said that he didn't have the time to. It's almost like he wants you to be there and go through certain events, most likely because you're the owner of Koridon or Maridon. And hey, speaking of being reached out to, why don't you guys reach out to me the way I reach out to you guys? Apparently only 2-3% of my viewers are subscribed, so if you are enjoying, please do subscribe because I will be making a follow-up to this video. Jacques also only recently became a teacher, as during Ortega's Team Storm Raid, Mr. Harrington makes mention that all the teachers in the school were hired a year and a half ago giving a complete overhaul to all the teachers that were there previously. So this means that Jacques was doing something else till this point. Most likely just his research, but why become a teacher then? Well, if we play off the villain motif, it makes sense because in the Scarlet and Violet books, the principal of the school then was the one who sponsored Heat's expedition. And because of that, all the data from his expeditions were left in the school, which should give Jacques reason to come work there. And whether he mentions Area Zero or not, he definitely has some tie-in to Terra Crystals, and measuring Terra energy, because once you beat the game, he's the one monitoring all the Terra raid dens and sends you off to take care of them, which is interesting because, correct me if I'm wrong, despite being a biology teacher and having hexagonal glasses, he doesn't actually make mention of the terrestrial phenomenon or doing any research on it at all, which he definitely does because the hexagonal glasses, duh. Hassel's the only one who makes mention of Jock terrestrializing and hexagons in one of his art classes, but beyond that, there's nothing. So, again, this goes against his supposed airheaded personality. It shows that he's keeping quiet about something and that works in line with his battle persona because when he battles, he gets all serious and stuff and it's nothing like the Jacques we know, leading me to think that he does have another more quiet and serious persona. And talking about the 5 and 6 star raid dens real quick, that stuff was whack. Bro was out to get us. He was literally like, oh, you shouldn't do them. You don't know what may happen to you. Oh, you did them? Oh no, you shouldn't have. Well, now that you did, just don't get murked and you can keep on doing them. Are you kidding me? Like, like none of you guys think that's sus? Like, come on. The only reason why people don't think it's sus is because of how friendly he's been, but that itself is a front. Y'all remember Volo? Volo was friendly too, but everyone knows how that went. Don't fall for it a second time. Don't do it. Don't, please don't. Furigaraf is also his ace Pokemon, a Pokemon that you can only get in a Terra Raid battle or in Area Zero. But of course, he could have just got a regular Giraffe Rig and evolved it. And he would know how to do that since he did make the Pokedex app, meaning that he has all the knowledge on all the Pokemon in the Paladin decks. But you mean to tell me that he has knowledge on all the Paradox Pokemon and doesn't make mention of them? He's a biology teacher and doesn't talk about how similar Amoongus and Brute Bonnet are? Or the fact that he's one of the few people to actually have seen Paradox Pokemon and has dex entries for all of them, further proving that he's seen and interacted with these Pokemon in Area Zero before. But unlike the rest of the characters in the game, Jacques goes a step further because he's aware of the Paradox Pokemon from the other version. Pokemon that no one else is aware of. So in this case, in Scarlet, he'd be aware of Violet's Iron Bundle. How else would he be able to create a dex entry for it? But how does he know about Paradox Pokemon and not say a word about it, or not notice anything strange about it? I'll tell you why. Jacques might be one of the only characters in the game to be aware of both the Scarlet and Violet universes. And that's because he owns both the Scarlet and Violet books, and it's hiding in plain sight as they're sitting right there in his lab coat. Coincidence? I, I think, think not. That While there is a chance that these books are just random books, the colors of Scarlet and Violet are odd. And between all five books that he carries, those are the only two without notes coming out of him. Yes, I know Briar's jacket is a combination of both books as well, but again, we'll come back to her another time. At the very least, you know Jacques knows about all four into Pokemon. That would also mean that he knows about both Koridon and Maridon, both past and future Pokemon, though only one of them exists in our world, meaning that somehow, some way, he has access to parallel worlds or dimensions, or at the very least, 
the source of the Paradox Pokemon. But the craziest thing about Jacques is not his appearance in the books, it's actually his name. You would think Jacques is just a regular old French name or something, and there's nothing crazy about it, but no. His English name comes from the same place that his Japanese name comes from. And what is his Japanese name? Zinnia. That's right, Zinnia. Now, actual Zinnia and Jacques don't seem to have any connection to each other, at least not yet. But the meaning behind their names remain the same. Thoughts of an absent friend or a longing of a lost friend. This explains Zinnia's relationship to Aster in the Delta episode, but for Jacques, what does it explain? We know so little about him that we don't know who or what he's lost, but it's quite possible that he has lost something and that the PPP is his way of dealing with his sorrow and bringing his lost friend back, which would be his motivation and goal, giving him reason to be the actual villain of this game. And you know how crazy Pokemon gets with naming people after flowers. Those names always have some deeper meaning to their characters. Besides Jock just having a personality that's not sus at all in the forefront, I think Pokemon has also done a great job of not making him look sus either. He appeared with Professor Willow to name Game Girl's chest form, and when Wiglet was revealed in the trailer, the Pokemon researchers from the trailer mentioned that they have to report this finding to Jacques, so they really cleared his name. And I know many people are wondering and saying that he's the person who validates your Pokedex. How can he be a villain? If he's gone, then who's gonna validate your Pokedex? I personally don't think this is an issue, because let's put it this way. By the time you reach him being a villain and all, it would have been past the Indigo Disc, or at the end of it. So by the time the game is over, it will be easy to swap the Pokedex evaluation from Professor Jock to Professor Clavel or something, and not have it interfere with the game's story at all. I don't think it's that big of a deal, honestly. But there's a lot more to this that I just don't have the time to go over right now, mainly in regards to Jock's connection with Heat and Terrapagos, the role that Jock might play during the Indigo Disc, how Jock possibly never ages, and how him and Heat may be time travelers, and possibly even related, maybe even being the same person. Possibly, but I know that gets really weird with Briar. Regardless, there's a lot to go over, a lot of breadcrumbs have been laid out, but I will be honest when I tell you guys that I haven't been able to solve the mystery of Jacques myself. A whole lot of suspicious things, but nothing to put it all together in the end, so I'm hoping that some of you guys may have some ideas on this, and I can share those ideas in part 2, so please do let me know if you have any such ideas. But the next part will go crazy into the lore of the Indigo Disc, and the Japanese tale that it's from and take a deeper dive into Heat and Briar as well, and see what they're all about, cause that's someone who we all have our eyes on. But for now, Jacques is super duper sus, and y'all should not be trusting him, cause the last time this happened, and you thought a guy was so friendly and innocent, and could do no wrong, Volo came out of nowhere, and really showed everyone who the real mastermind of the game was. And I'm telling y'all, that's what Jacques is doing right now. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed. Take care of yourselves, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you over on the next video, alright? Later, bye!